thanks for joining us today. We are here to talk about the world of polymer clay. And if you are live with us, we um, it is two days before Valentine's Day. So we are focusing on all things love and jewelry, hearts, and very, very cute projects. My name is Stephanie Menor, and I'm here to teach you all of the fundamentals you need to know about polymer clay, how to use it, how to condition it, how to bake it, how to design with it. We're going to show you a lot of different interesting techniques that you can take and use to enhance your own creativity. So let's sw switch to the other camera here so we can take a look at some of the projects we're going to make together. And these are earring projects. And I'll bring this one a little closer. You can see this one's a little rainbow. We've got some three piece earrings here and some stud earrings. This uses a very special technique that I'm so excited to show you about. All right, so let's dive right in and talk about the supplies that you need to do these projects. So let me just move these to the side and we'll start with what is beneath them, which is this thing. This is a tile from the hardware store. And I like to work on a tile because I can put this tile into the oven to bake the clay. And we're gonna talk all about that a little bit later. The next thing we have is clay. So uh, there are new types of clay in the world, and this is one of them. And this, these are clays that have patterns already in the clay. So um, this heart was made and baked from this clay. You can see those patterns go all the way through the clay. It's not just a surface print. Um, so this is a great time saver. If you're a beginner, you can use pattern clay. The projects we are doing today, however, focus more on solid colors of clay, something like this. And all of the clays and all of the tools that we are using today are available at Michael's in the jewelry making department. They are not, you're not going to find them with the rest of the polymer clay. This is special polymer clay that is for jewelry makers. And so that is our focus today in making these earrings. So these are the solid colors of clay that we're gonna be working with. I have some other scrap colors over here. I have an assortment of clay tools that might look something like this. You're definitely gonna want something that's kind of pokey like this and some other tools to work with, including a blade, this very sharp. Um, in the jewelry making department, there is a nice little intro tool set. Now I have taken the roller out of this. That's this empty compartment here. But this, these are all the basic tools that we're gonna use. And um, that blade that I showed you is here inside this case. So this, just this one item, you can do all of the things that I'm gonna show you. In addition, we have a series of cutters. These are all different shapes, specifically jewelry shapes, things that you would want to make into an earring or a necklace pendant. We have some texture sheets. We're going to show you how to use all of these different fun textures. Here's front and back because in one sheet, you have one design on the front, one design on the back. So cute. And a um, couple other things that we'll encounter along the way. I do have a paint palette because we are going to be painting some of this stuff. Um, let's, uh, let's get into the first project. So for the first project, we are going to make this earring. So this earring is a series of three different shapes that we are going to cut out of clay. We're going to bake them and then assemble them together. Well, bake them add some paint and then assemble together. And that starts with actually this color of clay. So once again, thank you for joining us as I open this clay up. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already told us where you're from in the chat, go ahead and do that, say hi. And if you have any questions, feel free to use that chat. We have some folks on here that are happy to answer your questions, as am I. If I can see it while I'm live, I'll try to answer it for you right then and there. Um, okay, so here is the clay. Once you get it out of that package, it does. it is wrapped in um, plastic. So I just am going to open this up. And this is what we have. 
So you notice this looks a little different than the rest of the polymer clays on the market, which come more in a block form. This is obviously in a slab form. And that um, makes it just a little easier to work with because you can kind of lay that down and go straight in with a roller. So the first tool I'm using is this acrylic roller that I showed you that came from our clay tool set. And I can just start rolling that out. Um, to help me do that, I'm gonna introduce another new tool to you. Are these thickness guides. So these help me roll out that clay to an even thickness. So we have two different size thickness of guides. One is 4.5 mm, one is 3 mm. This is the 3 mm. Okay, Wenlin, thank you for your comments in the chat. I am definitely gonna cover that when we get to talking about baking clay. She had a question about um, baking of the clay. And so we, um, I'm gonna cover that for sure. I wanna make sure to address that. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm just rolling this out. I have my thickness guides here and I can kind of feel when I'm getting down to the correct level. I'm really focusing just on this part because this is the part that I'm gonna use to cut out. All right. All right, next, let's bring in some cutters. So here's a heart cutter. This white powdery substance is cornstarch, which I always keep in a little uh, container here. That cornstarch helps um, eliminate sticking. So I, whenever I use a cutter, I like to take my cutter and kind of dip it in the cornstarch so it has some on the edge. And then I can cut out some shapes. So for each earring, we are gonna need two small hearts and one large heart. Well, now if this happens, see how that play kind of popped in here? You wanna just be careful getting it back out of that cutter. I like to use a tool rather than my fingers because with my fingers, I'm probably gonna get a fingernail in there or a fingerprint in there. So the, using a tool just helps me pop that back out if that happens. Now the, here, let me bring my example earring so we can have an idea of what we're doing here. So we need to make this larger heart here. And um, I'm gonna show you a little trickery on that heart. Um, and this is how you can use cutters and tools together to eliminate having to buy more cutters and tools. Um, so to make that heart, we're actually gonna start with this daisy shape uh, because we don't have a large car, uh, heart cutter. And so we gotta start somewhere. So we're gonna start with this daisy. Lift that right back up. All right, so now I am working on a ceramic tile. I like that for multiple reasons. Like I said, because I can bake on this tile and also because I can do this and just take out my all of my excess clay. In fact, I'm gonna cut it here with my blade. I'm gonna take that away and then kind of weed out all the rest of this excess clay. And to get in between, I can even use my little tool, okay? So that's the beginning of our shapes. We have to turn this one into a heart. And you can kind of see up here, we already have the heart top. And the bottom of the heart is easy to make because that is a V. So I take my tool and you'll notice I have some pieces of clay on top of here. I This is a little customization that I've done to my own tool because it made me nervous picking up this blade. I was afraid that I would pick it up and use it and pick up the sharp end and not the, the dual end. So I stuck some clay on here and threw it in the oven um, so that I would have a handhold and so I would know which side was which. So that's why that is like that. Um, all right, so we need to make our heart shape, which means we need a cut here and we need a cut here. And so using a blade to do that 
makes it really easy because you can just press down and take this away. And same on the other side, trying to kind of match the angle that I did from that first one. And now we have a heart. So this, I chose this project to do first with you because this is the easiest. Right now, all of the things that we need to do before we put it in the oven are done. Um, this is ready to go into the oven. I can pick this whole thing up and go and take it to my oven, which I have preheated to 250 degrees. So it's a warmish oven. Um, and so that is the temperature we suggest that you bake the clay at is 250 degrees for 20 minutes. And we had a comment in the chat earlier about she's done this, she's used polymer clay and the clay came out brittle. So if you are baking your clay correctly, when it comes out of the oven, it should be like this. It should be bendy. When I go like this, it shouldn't be brittle. If it is brittle, it's usually because um, the clay wasn't baked quite enough. It didn't get to go through its whole polymerization process that happens in the oven. Um, so I suggest cook it for five minutes longer. I wouldn't uh, bring your temperature up, but cook it for five minutes longer. And these are, that is just one of the many um, small adjustments that you may have to make when using polymer clay. Our ovens are rarely accurate to the temperature that they say that they are. And there may be hot spots within the oven too. So keep that in mind. If you are coming out with brittle clay, it's probably because it needs to be baked a little bit longer. Don't worry about burning it. It's not gonna turn brown. This is a 250 degree oven. It takes quite a lot to singe this stuff. So um, so keep that in mind. I hope that, that answers your question. Okay, so these are ready. This can go into the oven. Um, we're going to pretend that I put it in the oven <laughs> and instead oops, grab some things that I have already baked. So these are some hearts that I baked earlier. You can see they are flexible. And um, the next step would be to prep them, to paint them and prep them to be assembled like this. All right, so I'm going to grab a piece of parchment paper because it's time to paint. Um, actually, before I do that, let me just show you. I need to move these from this tile so that I don't mess them up with all the rest of the crafting, crafting that I'm doing. To move them, you want to use your blade and put it down parallel to the um, surface and scooch under. That's the technical term is scooching to pick those up and move them wherever you need to move them. This makes sure that you're not going to get your fingernail in there. You're not going to get your fingerprints in there. And that's how you can move it from one surface to another. So for example, if you are not going to be baking on ceramic, if you're going to be baking on a baking tray, that's something like this, you need to pick it up from your work surface and move it over there. And so that can get tricky. Um, so always make sure you, you're using your tools. Okay, so we have our baked clay, parchment paper, um, or just any random paper that you have. We're, I'm just doing this to keep my, my work surface here clean. We need a tiny little bit of pink paint, the tiniest little drop of it. And this is regular cheapy craft acrylic paint available at Michael's. This is, this is the kind of paint that's maybe a dollar or so per bottle. And I have an old toothbrush here. Now you can do this with a paintbrush. I can never get the right kind of like spray when I use a toothbrush, when I use a paintbrush. So I prefer using a toothbrush. And we do want to make sure that that paint is watered down. I, my toothbrush, I put it in water again. There we go. Got a lot of water up there. And do you think that we can spray without getting it everywhere? Let's try. Oh, there we go. It's not going to be perfect. 
This is not a stamp or something that we're using. Every little spray is gonna look a little bit different. So I like that. Let's wait for that to dry. And I'm gonna put my paint stuff away for now and bring it back out later. Okay, so that one is drying, but what I have is three small ones and I'm gonna show you how to attach these three small ones. Um, and what you will need is a way to drill holes. And so this little hand drill is perfect. This is also available at Michael's in the jewelry making department, but in the UV resin section is this little hand drill. And the way you use it is you put it in your palm and you can spin it here and it's kind of spinning in your palm and you place it where you want it to go and adding some pressure it really only takes a few seconds and I've gone through there you can see it's come out the back I'm going to reverse and now I've made a perfect size hole there for a jump ring which is what we're going to be doing in the next step so if you look at our example earring You'll see that I actually need two holes here on this heart, two holes on this heart, and one hole on the bottom heart. So let's do that. Line it up to where you want it to go. Oh, sorry, just a sec with my camera here. Ah, there, we're back. A uh, question from Michelle in the chat, is the tile a specific tile? Um, it is a ceramic floor tile. And I chose this one specifically because it was a smooth, shiny surface. You'll see a lot of tiles nowadays that have like a faux rough cut stone type surface. You don't want that because any, any texture is just gonna transfer to your pieces. So. Any color, as long as it is smooth and untextured and shiny. This one that I got, you know, I don't really know the size of this. It's an odd size. It looks like about eight by 14 or so. But any size can work, a six by six, 12 by 12 will work have some other tiles in other sizes. All right, one more. This is the one that's gonna go at the bottom. So I only need that top. You can see how easy it is to drill the holes exactly where you want them. And I know you're gonna say to me, Stephanie, can't you make the hole before you bake it? The answer is yes, of course you can. I just don't prefer doing it that way. So um, let's let's pretend here, this is unbaked clay. Whoop, this is unbaked clay. If I wanted to, before that goes in the oven, sure. I could put a toothpick or something sharp in there and make a hole and then that goes in the oven. I don't like doing this just because the holes are tend to be a little bit bigger that way and not consistent. So when I use this drill, I know that I'm getting the consistent size every single time. So. There are multiple ways to do it, but this is, I'm showing you the way that I prefer. I'm going to cut one, I'm going to cut holes in just one more because some of the holes that I drilled out are not super even. Is there any reason you can't drill flat on the tile? Is a question in the chat. Um, it's just awkward hand positioning, especially because this whole drill turns in my palm like this so I, I gotta maybe if I wasn't on camera I would kind of stick it down in there and, and move it but it's just awkward hand positioning for me is the only reason if you find it easier to go vertical with that that's fine okay so here are my pieces they have the appropriate holes to go in them and now to connect, we need some jump rings. So jump rings, if you're new to jewelry making, it, it's a basic building block of jewelry. 
So you're going to want to get something like this that where you have multiple sizes because you're going to be using them for pretty much every pair of earrings. So you can see the different sizes. Um, I think I'm going to go with that big one. So I need one jump ring here, one jump ring here, and one jump ring up here. To work with these jump rings, you're also going to want some basic jewelry pliers like these. Sometimes you only need one. So each jump ring has a break in the top. And I don't know, if you, it's very hard to see. It's very small. I'm trying to get as close to the camera as I can. But to open the jump ring, one side goes away from me and one side goes toward me. So now this is open. And this goes through. And while it's open, I can go ahead and add my earring finding that looks something like this. Add that on that same jump ring. And now I'm bringing in the other tool here just to be able to close that. So you close it in the opposite direction that you opened it. So there's our first heart. And if you like tiny earrings, you might want to stop here. But I, uh, I'm prone to excess here, so let's just keep going. We're going to open another jump ring. Put that through the bottom of the heart. And also attach the next heart with the right sides together. And I'll show you that again. We close this. So when I put the right sides together, when I connect it and open it, then the right sides are facing out. One more time. Let's open another jump ring. Here we go. I'm going to place this so that the right sides are together. Go through the jump ring that way. Oh, hold on. Let me try that again. That one doesn't want to pop through. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, the hole is good. Maybe it's just had some extra little, sometimes from the drill, it'll have some extra little stuff on the back. Let's do that again. Some days you're all thumbs. There we go. And close this last jump ring. All right, there you go. Three pizzas, earring, all put together. So with this technique of using cutters, baking it, and assembling them together, just that technique opens up a world of possibilities for earring design. Um, I'm going to show you a few. Here's three shapes that we put together. Here's two shapes that we put together. Here are three shapes here that work very well together. Love this one. So you can see, you can have a really fun time choosing which shape goes on the top, which shape goes on the bottom. Here you can mix a solid, a coordinating solid in the chain. So a lot of different options of making earrings just with that, with that technique. And that is the first completed earring that we have. Okay, switching gears to more clay. All right, let me just clean up a little bit here. I did get paint everywhere. All right, bring them back in our clay. And bring them back in our thickness guides. I do want to roll this out a little bit.
And just bringing it down in thickness. These slabs in the package are about five millimeters deep. So this, um, this um, thickness guide that I have is three millimeters with, they are etched with the size, just a little hard to see on camera. Okay, that seems about right. Okay, so now for this one, I wanna show you how to do something like this. So this is adding a textured pattern. So if I go to the side here a little bit, you can see that those flowers are actually raised. And this is your second technique that you're gonna learn how to do, which is using these texture sheets. And there are so many great patterns from stripes to like a sweater type of a pattern. Um, I wanna use those same flowers. Here they are. This is cornstarch that's in here, by the way. Um, these are very well used and well loved. All right, so here is the texture that we're gonna wanna use. Um, before I do that though, I do wanna take my cornstarch and either with my finger or I can use a paintbrush. You wanna make sure this has some cornstarch on it. Um, these texture sheets, um, you want to press down on them really hard. So, so you want to make sure that it's not going to stick on you. Okay, so we're going to lay that texture sheet down, grab our roller. And um, in this technique, you want, like I said, do you want to press this down really hard? So if you're in a seated position, sometimes it helps to stand up. Um, so that you can get your body weight down on it. I'm going to try to do that without standing up. But the important thing here is that you are keeping that texture sheet in place. You don't want it to move because if it moves, it's going to mess up your design. So one hand is dedicated to holding that down. The other hand is dedicated to kind of rolling it until you feel it really is seated in the clay and then you can use both hands. Okay, so let's see what we got. Oh, pretty. Oh, I, love this. I love this. It looks so fancy to me um, to do your clay like this, especially in a neutral color. For a neutral color, sometimes you just need a little pop of texture and it looks very sophisticated. So now we use a cutter and you can use any cutter that you want. You can do the same heart technique that, um, that we showed you by starting with the daisy cutter. I'm gonna choose another cutter because I just wanna show you a few of the fun cutters that we have over here. Let's get I'm going to do this arch just because I like arch shaped things right now. And so you can lay that onto your texture that you've created and spend some time to really line it up. So I'm looking through the cutter to make sure that everything's symmetrical. If you like symmetrical, if you want it to be a little more chaotic, you go ahead and do that. But for me, I'm going to try to line this up. Okay, that's about where I want it, but I forgot my cornstarch. So let's dip in the cornstarch. And press down. And you really wanna make sure you're getting it down in there. I think I can fit another one over here. Let's see. My pattern isn't going to ma match up. Oh, don't let the perfectionism get you. It gets me all the time. My pattern isn't matching up on these two earrings, but let's just, it's going to be okay. <laughs> okay, so this is what you have. And then you can just weed out all of this excess clay. And this isn't wasted. This is going to go into a ball. And you're going to save this for your next project. 
And I need the help of a tool here to get this out. And to get this out. And to make this a little nicer, I can kind of clean up the edges with a tool. What happened here? <laughs> I lost a chunk of my earring. Um, I must have been a little bit quick with how I removed that excess. So be careful. Don't just whip it off like I do. I am very impatient, which is why polymer clay is actually an excellent craft for me because it's um, very tactile and it's very instant. I make it, I bake it, I'm done. All in one sitting. All right, so I can just kind of clean that up. And then again, because I'm working on the ceramic tile, I don't need to touch it. I don't need to transfer it to a baking sheet. This can just go into the oven. Uh, so that is how you do some texture. Um, to add the paint, um, actually, let me show you this paint. This is a paint that we recommend by Folk Art. It's just a really pretty um, metallic luster gold paint um, in Mayan gold. And um, you just kind of um, a dry brush that on top. And I want to show you that. Let me get another piece. Here's another piece that is really hard for you to see. Well, here's another piece that is, is baked, but has not been painted yet. I'm bringing my paint palette and my Mayan gold. And again, we need a tiny, tiny little bit of this. I don't even want to pour it out. Um, I'm going to go and just go straight in the bottle with my paintbrush. So you want to do this more of a dry brushing technique when you're brushing over um, texture. So that is where you use a brush that is almost dry. So you can kind of blot it off on some um, paper towels. And with a very light hand, it will the paint will adhere to those raised up bits. And you don't need a lot. That just kind of transformed this very simple piece into, uh, it just brings out the texture. And so that is how you can add paint on top of texture. Let's let that dry. So we'll bring him back. I'm going to move these off to the side. Oops, got a piece of clay with it. And just kind of clean up my area here. So let's say you have this and it is dry. And now you need to turn this into an earring. Well, there's a lot of ways to do that. Number one, you can use a jump ring and an ear wire very similar to what we just did, okay? But if you would prefer for it to be a stud earring, an earring like this, this is how you do it. So Michael sells these earring posts that have a flat station and you just glue that to the back. And so let me grab my glue. This is the glue that I recommend. This is Loctite Super Glue. They have the regular kind or this is the gel kind. This is the gel control. It's just a little bit of a thicker consistency. And I just need one drop. And you can kind of grab this with your pliers it might make it easier to handle and just glue that on let me 
making sure that you get it centered. All right, and there's our stud earring. Let's let that dry. We'll come back to that at the end of the class. Okay, that's two projects down and two unique techniques that you know how to do now. Cutting, adding paint, adding texture. Um, and so let's move on to the next project. How are you guys doing? You feeling good? You feeling inspired? I hope so. <laughs> okay, next project we're gonna do is um, is super fun. These, these kind of faux woven little earrings here, um, rainbows. So we are gonna need three different uh, faux braids. They're not braided, they're twisted. So we need three different twists, one, two, three. And you can make those twists in different color clay, or you can make them in the same color clay and paint them. So I'm gonna choose this color. This is that same kind of peachy color that we've been working with. Um, and in this case, I'm using the leftovers that came out of that last little piece that I weeded out and I am conditioning the clay. So what you see me doing here, this is conditioning. You are just kneading the clay, you're warming it up in your hands and you're getting it nice and soft and supple. And this helps you work with it a little easier. This is sort of your standard first step um, when working with clays that aren't pre-patterned. You know, when you're working with a pre-patterned clay like this, obviously you're not gonna um, condition first, this is preconditioned um, because you would mess up all that beautiful pattern. But if you're working with a solid color, it is a good idea to condition it. And so I can feel now that it's soft, it's ready to go. And um, I'm gonna break off a piece and make a snake. I don't know if you can hear that. There's somebody outside making a strange noise. All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm making a little snake here, but I'm gonna show you a, a little tip. So this is that same thickness guide that I was showing you. This is the 4.5 mm thickness. If you wanna make the snake perfect, smooth, without any, see how, it's just like kind of got some waviness in it from using my fingers. Use a solid surface like this and you just roll it and you can kind of see already how much smoother and perfect it makes these snakes. Um, so what I like to do is I always like to start it with my fingers. That kind of helps me get to the right uh, thickness. And then to finish, you can go in with something like this. This is getting a little long. Let me cut it off. Okay. That one looks good. So for each row of the rainbow, you're going to want two little things. And then we combine the two at the top and start twisting. And your only job is to make sure that the bottoms don't twist before you want them to. So I'm kind of keeping the bottoms separate until they twist. And I can kind of pull at it a little bit. There you go, that's how I make a twist. If I wanted to kind of marry them a little bit, I can go like this more. That you see how that changes the texture of the snakes? Makes it a little more, I don't know, more like a ropey, ropey texture. All right, and so we're gonna wanna find something that we can lay it around to make that shape in the middle. Um, 
you know, this is where you use something that you have. And I think that I'm going to use uh, just a wood stick. Okay, so there's my first one. Actually, let me move this to the side because I need to do this again. So next color of clay. This is a, also a great way of using up any leftovers that you have because you really only need a small bit of clay. So I have a little, <laughs> a little parcel of leftover clay over here. So I'm gonna pull this color. It's got some other color already in it, but that in the conditioning of it, we're gonna put those together. All right. All right, so you pull off a bit, make a snake. Start to roll that out. I'm gonna cut that in half and bring this down in size a little bit. Ooh, that one looks pregnant. Let's see. Let's get this one. Let me bring in this instead of because my fingers are making it bumpy. So we want to make it perfect. There we go. All right, let's go back to my little pregnant snake here. Let's cut that off. And then use this to perfect it. Ooh. Okay, put the two ends together. Keep these two ends away from each other. Oop. And twist. And if you don't like the way it twisted, you can untwist it and retwist. All right, let me just cut this off. That's gonna be my middle piece. All right, one more. I happen to have some purple lavender clay here. And I've already made it in snakes, but I wanna show you how to do it. So let me make those together again. And you want to be careful. I am really I'm going through this process really quickly because I want to make sure we can get through all of these earrings in one hour. But you can see when you look very closely at my clay, there's some transference of color because I have that on my fingers and down here. So if you want to be if you're, you want to be really accurate and perfect, um, you just want to clean your area, clean your tools in between colors, especially when you are switching from a very dark color like black to white, because that will really show up in your whites and your light colors. And let's perfect it. Bring the other one in. I want to stretch out a little bit more. I find it's easier to stretch them with your fingers and just use this for just kind of perfecting the texture. All right, let's twist.
And I'm just going to cut off this excess. Okay, so now I have all of my snakes. And I want to use this. I want this color in the middle. Do this one in the middle. And this one on the edges. Oh, you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just kind of placing them and then gently pushing them together. Don't worry about all this excess. We're just cutting that off. Take that out and decide on how long you want that rainbow to be. I think mine is going to be right here. And that is how you make it. So this, again, because it's on ceramic, I can take that right into the oven and, and bake. Once I bake it, I will need to put one hole in the top to put one jump ring and connect them together. Uh, I'm not gonna show you that part because um, I wanna move on to show you another technique. So color possibilities are endless here. You can see on our example, on this outer layer, we, we did our little paint spraying technique and got that more pinky, but you can do a traditional rainbow color. I love it in these muted rainbow colors. Um, and so that is, that project. Let me move this over here. I'm gonna try to clean up a little bit. Now this next one that I'm gonna show you is super fun, super cool. This one's my favorite, I think, because you get to use um, other products that you might have in your craft stash. stash. And that product is silicone molds. So if any of you are UV resin people, we also teach classes on UV resin. It's an amazing material. It uses these molds, these silicone molds a lot. And um, so they work amazing with resin, but you can use them for polymer clay. Um, and the cool thing about this is because it's silicone, silicone can go in the oven. There are silicone baking mats and silicone cupcake liners, all of that silicone is very resistant to high temperatures. So you can put this directly in the oven and that's what I did. So I'm, I'm gonna show you how to do the process, but we're gonna do the end of the process first because I've already baked these. So um, I, I put the clay in here and then I took this whole thing and put it into my oven and I baked it 250, 20 minutes. And now we're gonna pop them out and see what we got. So first I made this leaf I was trying to do kind of like a, an ombre pattern. Then I did this heart where I put a bunch of different colors of clay in there. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. And then I did this rose with a lot of different colors and pattern clay. So that's what they look like. These are baked, um, so they are flexible. So let me show you how I did it. We are gonna use this mold here, which is a rose, it's a 3D rose. And so the easiest thing to do is just using some clay. Which is well conditioned, so I'm conditioning it again. This um, this sat over there for just a few minutes and it already needs to be conditioned again. So. Let's do that. So we're getting it nice and warm. The easiest way to do it is just push the clay in there. You can see what's happening. And what you can also do is kind of push it and hold the back of the clay, the back of the mold. So you wanna make sure that you are shoving that clay into the recesses of this mold. You wanna get it down in there, okay? 
And so that's basically what I'm doing here, getting it down in there. And then when the edges get too much, I kind of fold those over and mush it down in there again. Okay, so you're gonna end up with all of this excess. Take your blade, using it parallel, and be very careful here because you can cut your silicone mold. So you wanna go slowly and cut off that excess. And you'll be left with something like this. And I can take this and put it into the oven right now um, without doing anything more to it. Um, I find it's easier to just leave it in the mold until it's baked because then once it's baked, it's hard and you can pop it out very easily. If you pop it out now, you can. It's just not super easy, but I'm going to do it anyway. So just being very gentle with it, you can pop it out. Okay, and then bake it. Um, or like I said, you can bake it in here. So let me show you some options. So this is just the plain clay unbaked. Here is the baked clay and we've added that same gold dry brushing technique here. Here I use different colors of clay. I wanted to make it look realistic like a rose where the middle of the rose is darker and then it, it gets lighter as it goes out. And this one I use some pattern clay. All the exact same techniques of shoving it in there, <laughs> pushing it in there, getting it in the nooks and crannies, and then carefully shaving away what you don't need. All right, so this is the one, this is baked, and we need to add a back to it to turn that into a stud earring. So again, with my Loctite glue, I just need a drop of that. And using my fingers or a tool, just place that exactly where you want it to go and let it dry. And there you have a perfect stud earring. Here it is with the gold added onto it. And here's the back. Okay. Um, all right, we are nearing the end here, uh, but I did want to at least show you um, the final stud. I'm not going to work through the whole thing, but in this pair of stud earrings, we have added some metal accents. And that metal accent is just ball chain. You may have an old ball chain necklace somewhere hanging around. So we have used a small heart cutter. Cut that out just like I showed you, but before we baked it, we very carefully placed ball chain around and then put it in the oven. The ball chain just goes directly into the oven. And so that's how you can get sort of that metal detail along the sides. I'll show you another one that I made here. You get that metal detail around the sides, but you don't have to place, you know, 20 metal balls. It's They're all joined together because it's, it's a uh, ball chain. All right, so I hope that I have inspired you to try polymer clay, to try making jewelry. Um, we are so glad that you joined us today. We do these classes twice a month, twice a month clay classes, once a month UV resin classes. So our next class is February 23rd. It's a Friday um, in the afternoon. So please come and join us. Look on michaels.com under classes and events. And that's where you'll see all of the classes, including jewelry making classes. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys.